Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to It Came From The 80s, D. Bougie 86 here again. Yes, another It Came From The 80s, guys. Like I said, this series will be coming back more regularly. And I got a special one for you because it was actually a first time watch for me. Yes, uh, this film I might have heard of back in the day, but I never got a chance to check it out for some weird reason. Probably just not available in my area, or like in the rental stores, or uh, wasn't ever on TV, or subverse or it could have been just I wasn't really into like this type of film back then who knows it's a long time ago and my memory back then is not the best but I know I never seen this film before because it was really enjoying it for the first time view and it's a film from 1986 of course if you know my channel or follow me at all you know 1986 is the year of my birth a lot of great films came out especially during like uh, for the horror fans a lot of great horror films came out in 86 and a lot of great like other films came out too like of course platoon which won best picture of that year great awesome film and uh numerous other like action films also came out in 86 so it was a very solid year for movies all together and this one of course is titled band of the hand uh of course this is the new release of this film first blu-ray release from uh, mill creek entertainment good old mill creek now when i was looking into the information in this film i saw that like uh, michael mann was the producer and it got me thinking of like of course michael mann director of manhunter uh and thief took a lot of like things with like of course he was producing miami vice during this time also and you could see the miami vice uh uh, influence that this film that was put into this film of course with Michael Mann who took this project without even reading the first draft of the script and he actually worked hand in hand with the writers while writing the script for this film so you see the very Michael Mann influence on the film of course him as a producer in general is a big influence because this film does take place in Miami and it has a very interesting cast. Of course, we got Stephen Lang, of course, who also starred in Manhunter the same year. Uh, he was also, most notably for me, I seen him in like lots of numerous other films during uh, growing up, like Tombstone and uh, his most famous roles, probably, of course, Avatar. And uh, of course, last year's Don't Breathe, where he played the antagonist of that film. So very interesting like subcast too we got like leon from like cool run-ins uh john cameron mitchell from Hedwitch and the Hang angry inch which is a musical very fabulous musical if you haven't seen it it's not for everyone but it's a really good well-made film and he plays the lead character in that film really interesting to see him in like a younger role we got like uh uh lawrence fishburne in a role of course lawrence fishburne who went on to become like this famous like actor an elegant actor for that matter, starring in numerous movies growing up. Awesome actor right there. Uh, Paul Kellerdron, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. I probably butchered the hell out of it. Uh, of course, I know him most notably for like King of New York and like uh, Pulp Fiction. He's been in a lot of like Abel Ferreira films, I noticed that. And we also get James Remar, of course, from The Warriors, 48 Hours, and Dexter, of course, uh, Dexter's father and that Sarah is a very good actor. I've seen him in numerous films growing up. James Remar, if you don't know who he is. Uh, very great character actor. Now, the main plot of this one, we're introduced to these, like, five, like, youths that are in, like, this youth detention center who, of course, come from, like, different areas of Miami, the bad seeds of Miami. And they end up being taken out of this detention center and put into this special program, which is run by Joe, who's played by Stephen Lang. And what Joe's intentionally trying to do is try to have these guys work as a team and build and fit them for society again, which ends up happening. And they end up going back to Miami after a lot of like training process happens. And they're trying to set up this community halfway house in this very, uh, dirty area of Miami where uh, the drug trade is very heavy in and you could tell from like uh, when they meet like certain characters in this drug trade like including like uh, Cream played by Lawrence Fishburne and Nestor played by James Remar 
who is the head of this drug cartel, uh, things aren't going the way that they want it to go, and it's not going to go away unless they do something about it. So it's end up uh, these individuals trying to stop this drug trade and drug cartel. That is pretty much the main plot. We're going too crazy into it. Now, my thoughts on it. Really cool film, man. This is the first time watched, like I said. I really was dug into the story from the opening like shots or like uh, this montage of like uh, our five main youths getting arrested and why they got arrested for. And it was really cool like seeing them and build as characters as the film progressed because when you first meet them, they're not wanting to work together at all. Like especially uh, Moss who's played by Leon and uh, Ruben's character who are part of these rival gangs and they end up almost killing each other at one point in the film. And it ends up being that they become like very close friends and I really like the interaction with all the characters and love how they progress in the film. Uh, Stephen Lang as Joe as like the surrogate father figure is phenomenal. It's a very interesting performance for any actor to take. And he does a really good job in this film as like this, uh, like I said, a surrogate father to these uh, young youths and it builds and makes them build into better people. Now the CD side of the, the Miami world is played beautifully by James Remar who is one of the biggest piece of shits on screen in his performance. It really, he plays like one of the dirtiest characters I ever saw in film and he does a terrific job as Nestor, this evil like drug kingpin who gets his way and gets what he wants pretty much type attitude with his character. And it was really funny to see like a young Lauren Holly. I forgot to mention her. And we do get like a lot of like a, uh, love uh, triangle thing going on between uh, Carlos's character with uh, her character of Nikki because uh, there's a thing that Nestor actually is dating Nikki at the time because when Carlos went to jail she didn't know where he was and it ended up being like a thing with the drug trade also and the way drug users are and gets a hold of you. So I really did kind of like the interaction with that stuff too in this film. Uh, great cast, I have to say, that everyone did a terrific job in their roles. John Cameron Mitchell, I really love his character of JL. A really awesome character, especially because he's a very silent character in the beginning of the film. And in his, as the film progresses, his character uh, ends up becoming like an important part. And you can see what his character can do in the film. Very awesome stuff. Very awesome 80s action stuff with an awesome 80s soundtrack. Uh, the main theme to the song, of course, is by Bob Dylan with uh, the Heartbreakers, as you know, which is Tom Petty's band, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, I can't think of the name of the song off the top of my head, but it's fucking awesome. Really great, like, Mr. Mister plays in one scene. It's just a great, like, film for the 80s. If This is like a lost gem of, like, 80s action films, and I'm kind of glad that uh, Mill Creek did put this out on Blu-ray. Uh, for like those 80s action fans to rediscover because this is a really fucking good movie man it had me entertained throughout it there's nothing really to say maybe like maybe some pacing issues with like some certain things but the film is well paced and it does have like maybe some signs of like cheesy dialogue in the film like uh, one scene that involves like a hardware store like with like the shop owner, which kind of was kind of ridiculous and funny at the same time. But it's a super fun film, man. If you haven't seen Band of the Hand, I highly recommend it. If I had to rate it, I'm going to give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. Awesome action film from the middle of the 80s uh, thing of action films in general. Awesomeness right here. Check it out. All right, guys, that's it for this. It came from the 80s. I'll be back soon with another one. And as always, I'll see you then. Peace out.